Thank you for joining the Wolf College of Coffee Vlog. My name is Peter Wolf. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, um, I guess, thermocouples and RTDs uh, and what, what should I be choosing on my roaster. It's certainly something uh, that uh, some people ask us about. Uh, and I'm really going to talk about the two most common ones, uh, which is a K-type MIMS and an RTD. Uh, the the K-type MIMS is the most common one uh, that would be used and, and generally is um, a good all-round sort of uh, thermocouple that we would be using. Uh, this one here operates at a higher temperature, so from between zero and 500 degrees Celsius. Um, but is a little, it is a little inaccurate, um, particularly uh, at sort of lowered sort of temperatures. Uh, they do tend to perform a little bit, a bit better at, uh, at higher temperatures. Uh, its nickname, or it's, it's MIMS, which is Mineral Insulated Metal Sheath. So as you can see on this particular thermocouple, it has a very large thick sort of bottom here where it connects into the two cables and this is full of mineral, a mineral deposit and then obviously we have our shaft with our little thermocouple sort of on the end. All our thermocouples only ever read on the tip, they don't read along the shaft at all, um, so all measurement is taken at that. Uh, they typically come with a red and a yellow or a positive and a negative uh, polarity and so you would be connecting this back into the existing uh, input board uh, that would be provided on your roaster, uh, depending on what make or model is that. Uh, we have one here which is a fidget, um, which comes out of uh, Canada, I believe, and this is a four input uh, fidget. And this is really the communication device that takes the uh, electrical uh, measurement and converts it uh, through a, view, a USB cable uh, and converts that into either you know, Kelvin, Celsius or Fahrenheit. So this is our little communication box that sort of brings that data into sort of a user-friendly user way. There are some common mistakes in terms of installing this. The main one uh, is that when, we, uh, when you are connecting uh, these two cables in the yellow or the red cable. If you're getting a reading and, the, and it's reading uh, in a negative number, all you need to do is uh, take out the red and the yellow and swap their position over in the board. Uh, it's just the polarity needs to swap around. Uh, most of these ones I particularly like because you can use it for um, a bean and air temperature probe, uh, particularly if you only have the one probe in your roaster and it's sort of sitting in the middle of the roaster, so halfway up the drum face, it's a, it's a really good kind of all-rounder. I particularly like them, very sturdy and robust. Uh, one of the things that you want to make sure is that the shaft itself, uh, you, you keep that to a fairly minimum, so anywhere between two and three millimetres uh, is what we would be recommending. We find that anything less than two millimetres is just a little bit too thin uh, and we were getting lots of issues with uh, them being broken inside the roaster. Uh, this particular uh, thermocouple that I have is a dual output, as you can see. So this allows me to connect two devices off the one, off the one particular thermocouple, so that's fairly handy. The next one I want to talk about is the resistance temperature detector, or RTD, and that's this one here. Uh, very, very popular for bean temperature probes, largely doing that it's very accurate, uh, very responsive, uh, but one of the trade-offs to that is that it only operates at a very low temperature. So typically between zero and 250 degrees Celsius, but yeah, very appropriate for, uh, for your bean temperature. So particularly if you're wanting to place this lower down inside the, the drum plate, and uh, have, have it sort of sitting in around the bean mass. Perfect, ideal, super responsive um, and a great choice. Would not be something that we would be recommending for uh, exhaust air temperatures or afterburners because uh, quite simply it won't operate above 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, very similar sort of, uh, sort of setup to the other one. Uh, this one is a two and a half mil uh, shaft that we've got on this particular uh, RTD. Uh, and again, we also have the dual output so it allows us to run two particular outputs uh, or uh, into this or two particular devices off this one probe. Uh, you can connect them either into a, uh, a multimeter if you have that capacity with the temperature setting. So this will also allow it to give you a physical reading. So if you don't have any third party software like Artisan or Cropster, uh, but you're wanting to know what's happening in terms of temperature, then you can connect it via a simple uh, little multimeter and that will display the temperature for you here. Uh, the other alternative that we do have, as I said, is the fidget, um, and this will allow the, the communication between the probes 
and, and whatever sort of software package that you're running at the time through a USB cable. Um, so there it's my recommendations uh, for the two. Uh, I definitely would suggest that on an annual basis you change all of your probes out because one of the things uh, that you will experience is a drift in temperature over a period of time. Uh, so as a general rule here at Wolf Coffee Roasters, uh, every 12 months we uh, pull the probes out and replace them with brand new probes. One of the other things that I do recommend is that when you do take the old probe out, it's just to mark off uh, on the probe uh, with a bit of black pen the depth of or how far in that it's gone uh, to act as a gauge because what will happen uh, if you do push the probe in a little bit deeper than, than the previous one, you will get a slightly different reading off it. So definitely use your old probe when you pull it out, mark it off with a bit of black texture so you know when you put and then mark that off on the new one and use that as a guide to, to, to replace the new one so it slots in exactly back in the, a, the same or similar position. But like always guys, if you've got any uh, questions, feel free to uh, type some questions out below and uh, we'll get back to you. Thank you for watching.